Hi, Pastor. Could you please make clear exactly what a demon spirit is? Are they related to the fallen angels? Also, is it possible for a child of God with quite good knowledge of the kingdom of God who continually fellowships with the Lord and speaks forth the word of God experience some form of hindrance from a demon? Thank you, Pastor. Well, um, the words demons, devils, unclean spirits are many times interchangeably used. But when you talk about falling, falling angels or these evil spirits, you will be looking at several different things. Firstly, there were those that fell with Lucifer, the pre-Adamite age, that means ever before the man Adam was created. There was a pre-Adamite age. And so um, you have uh, Satan and the angels that fell with him. So you have, that, that's a class of evil spirits or uh, fallen angels as it were as it were then again you study in genesis when you um, read into uh, the days of noah and why god destroyed the world he does talk about angels that didn't keep their first place their first estate and then they began to meet with human beings and so the bible tells us how that they had to be punished so that's another set of fallen angels so the the term fallen angels or evil spirits or demons may be interchangeably used but these are the two classes of fallen angels and then you have those of them that were bereaved of their bodies see they were bereaved of their bodies why others are in chains then you have the other class of demons because they have a, 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 a hierarchy of authority. The, those that um, had a very high authority and um, they had the power to function as though they were human beings. These were high level angels. It's just like today, the good angels, they are also of different classes. You have those who the Bible says they can appear uh, visit you like human beings they don't come with wings they don't look different they just appear as though they're human beings you see that in, in the book of Hebrews the 13th chapter the Bible says we should not neglect to entertain strangers because some have entertained angels unawares how would you entertain an angel unaware if you if he came with, with wings you would know but because it says they appear like men like the Bible shows us in the Old Testament as well as the New, how they appeared like human beings. See, um, they, they, they dressed like human beings, but you knew them if you had the revelation of God's Spirit, the wisdom of God, to distinguish between these, you could tell. So the high class angels would have that, and then um, that was the same thing that those fallen angels were able to do before they fell. Now, their ability to act that way wasn't removed from them. And so the Bible talks about uh, Satan acting like an angel of light. Then it says it's no wonder if his ministers also function as though they're angels of light. So we do know that they do act as though they're angels of light. So demons particularly are those who were punished with the bereavement of their bodies. They do not have their celestial bodies today they didn't they they weren't of that class of angels that had those kind of bodies now because they don't have those bodies they act differently now there are those that are called um, evil spirits now these evil spirits not just the generic name i mean satan is an evil spirit because he's a spirit and he's evil but there are those that are particularly called evil spirits you find um, especially during the ministrations of Jesus Christ when he cast out evil spirits and we're told evil spirits went out now sometimes uh, if you remember the name Beelzebub 
meaning a lot of flies. See, it's because those spirits functioned like flies. See, now the term spirits was used to characterize their activities, not their shapes or sizes. So when they were cast out, if you had the spirit, uh, if you had the, the revelation of God, you would, you would see them as though the a swarm of flies because there's so many and this had nothing to do with their sizes see remember that spirits can change their shapes they can change their shapes or the forms in fact that's why the name the, the term spirit is used whether in the Old Testament rock or in the in the New Testament pneuma it means spirit wind it's trying to describe the characteristic of being formless, shapeless, uh, and, um, and can be contained in anything large or small. See? But in the realm of the spirit, remember those are languages that are, are used in, human, in, the, in the human world. But in the, in the realm of the spirit, there are actually sizes and shapes. They are known in the realm of the spirit. God is a spirit. He has a shape, he has a form, you see. And he showed us his real shape and form when he said, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. But then, characteristically, he can fill a whole building, a large volume, and he can fill your little heart, you see. Which means you can contain him to a certain size and say, this is his limit. That's why the term spirit is used. So... Um, in helping you understand that, you would need to study a little more from the, the Gospels particularly to see by their actions who exactly is being referred to. Satan, for example, does not possess individuals. The way Satan uh, functions is to, um, it's like God, you know, God will not possess you but by his spirit. You see, and he wouldn't take over you in that form and take over your mind. But, you know, the devil tries to do that. But what he does is he has a celestial body which wasn't taken from him. And he can act, he can show himself in form of a human being. Because he's a high class angel, fallen angel though. But then, uh, unlike the demons, that have been bereaved of their bodies that need to be in a, in a living person to carry out their functions in the earth. Satan doesn't need that. And so the, the, the other high class angels, they don't need that. They can just transform themselves and function like a human being. And, uh, but you can recognize them, like I said, by the spirit. And then how they enter into people is by putting their words into them. For example, the Bible tells us how that uh, uh, Peter said something in response to Jesus when Jesus said that he was going to die. The Bible says that Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. He rebuked Jesus and told him, no, don't talk about dying anymore. And then Jesus, the Bible says, turned to Peter and said, Get thee hence, Satan, for thou severest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. He turned to Peter and, and commanded Satan to get out. Did that mean that Peter was possessed by Satan? as the, the demoniac in Gadara was possessed by, by a demon? No. Satan introduced his words into Peter. And Peter spoke forth those words. And Jesus, knowing that that was Satan's way of manipulating, rebuked Satan. See, how does God enter into you today? He doesn't leave his throne and come into you. He sends his word into your heart. You accept his word. His word gets into your heart. That's the way God gets into your heart. So that's how Satan operates as a person. But his demons operate differently. They literally get into the individual. First through a suggestion. And then you open your mind to that suggestion. And you, therefore you open your, yourself to that evil spirit to come in. But as a child of God... You can always disallow the devil. He can't take over you except you let him. He can't have dominion over you. But here's the second part of your question here that's very important. Is it possible for a child of God 
with the good knowledge of the word of God and of the kingdom of God who continually fellowships with the Lord and speaks forth the word of God can he experience some form of hindrance from a demon can he experience some form of hindrance emphatically yes now I want to read uh, Paul's experience to you here in this area first Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 18 wherefore we would have come unto you even I Paul once and again but Satan hindered us it is several times I would have come to you we wanted to come to you it says especially for me I I, I, I tried several times it says but Satan hindered us why did he say that because Satan hindered them no Satan cast a stumbling block in their way he hindered them and that's why and he knew it was Satan that hindered them he could have said well things changed but he discerned he knew that it was Satan that caused the hindrance and so we can know and if we know we can deal with the situation and let me say this to you and it's very important if the devil is behind any situation it's easier to deal with you shouldn't become afraid it's always easier to deal with because Satan or the demons are intelligent beings and they respond to authority so they know you've got power over them if you know how to use it so you shouldn't be frightened that oh it's the devil that's hindering this oh it's the devil that's behind this no if it's the devil the case is easier 